Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Also, you'll notice in the description of this video are links to find us on iTunes, TuneIn, and Stitcher. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, it's my belief that at times you've got to swim against public opinion right if you go with public opinion you're not gonna make a profit right it's the gap between what the public thinks and what reality is where you make your profits in sports betting now I agree with Teddy Atlas the famous trainer the man who led Michael Moore to the heavyweight title right I agree with Teddy Atlas that this fight shouldn't be designated a title fight simply because the guys who are listed as the contenders have worked hard to get that designation right you can't have guys just jump the line right simply because the promoters feel that you know the guy would make an exciting fight right so Rod Salka shouldn't jump over all of the contenders in front of him I'll agree with that but keep in mind when I'm placing a bet I'm not interested in boxing politics I'm actually going wherever the film takes me right now right now as I make this video Salka is a 14 to 1 you heard right 14 to 1 underdog on many gambling outlets right 14 to 1 when you look at the tape what you're gonna find out is that Salka who calls himself lightning rod has the faster hands than Danny Garcia but the biggest gap even bigger than the hand speed gap is Sokka's foot speed. He's much faster than Danny Garcia. Let me say too, if you go through Garcia's history, you're going to notice that Garcia does better when he's being stalked in the ring by, let's say, a Lucas Matisse right he does better when you know an Amir Khan is foolish enough to stand right in front of him and to try to trade with him where he's not as good is when the other guy is showing a lot of movement and a lot of back foot so I would encourage you to take a look at the Ashley Teopain film right that's an old fight but it's troubling because Garcia really is a mid-range hooker right he doesn't like to impose himself on you if the other guy's on his back foot especially when the other guy is working behind a jab Garcia has problems let me just point out Garcia destroyed Eric Morales in their rematch but I want you to go back to the first fight you're gonna notice that El Terrible's punches were much straighter than Danny Garcia's keep in mind El Terrible went 12 rounds with Danny Garcia as did Mauricio Herrera in Danny Garcia's last fight now understand this play is really only for gamblers who are willing to take huge risk what could possibly be bigger than even thinking about taking a guy who's a greater than 10 to 1 underdog in other words if I bet a dollar on Sokka and he shocks the world I get back fourteen dollars in profit plus the return of my dollar right now understand 
Where Salk is from in Philly has a very, not Philly, Pennsylvania, right? To the Pittsburgh people, hey, I recognize you're a different world, right? I don't mean to confuse the roots with Wiz Khalifa, right? But I'll say this, where Salk is from, they have a very rich boxing history, just like they do where Danny Garcia is from in Philly, right? The state of Pennsylvania has had a lot of great fighters right now understand Salka has been training with one of them a guy named Paul Spatafora a guy who used to have a title right let me also say too that Sergei Kovalev you know him the light heavyweight champion right unbeaten his trainer John David Jackson you know him, not just a superstar trainer, but also a guy who himself used to be an elite fighter. Keep in mind, back in the day, he fought Bernard Hopkins. Right? Did you know that John David Jackson had a fighter who was unbeaten, who actually faced Rod Salka in his last match? And did you know that Salka, quite frankly, made the guy look limited? Salka, in fact, came in, started hitting the guy to the body. Now, it's interesting because Salka is a guy who really emphasizes hand speed. As I said, his nickname is Lightning Rod. But just like the baseball batters who decide that they're going to be high average guys and they'll sacrifice some power to get that batting average well above 300, Right? Just like those guys, if they wanted to, could crouch down a little bit in the batter's box and hit the ball a lot harder than most. I believe so too can Rod Salka when he wants sit on his punches. Right? I encourage everyone to look at the knockdown in Salka's last fight against Alexi Collado. Right? Salka can jump in and he can go to the body. The bet I'm recommending in this fight is Rod Salka to win the fight at 14 to 1 odds, hedged with Danny Garcia by KO. Understand, many of the guys Garcia's been fighting, right? Zab Judah, right? This version of Eric Morales, right? A late in his career Kendall Holt, who, by the way, went the distance with Danny Garcia. Many of these guys don't have great foot speed. You've been seeing Danny Garcia beat up on guys who haven't moved around the ring as well as I believe Rod Salka can. Right? Throw in the fact that Salka is mentally tough. In other words, this is a guy who was a member of the US military. This is a guy who used to promote his own fights right let me just say there's a difference between a guy who's gifted and ends up in boxing versus a guy who has a dream and literally goes out there and makes it happen right entrepreneurs with their own business who started with a lot of lint in their pocket know what I'm talking about right and so to me, Salka is mentally tough. He's going to move better than Danny Garcia. He's going to have the hand speed advantage on Danny Garcia. And he's training with a guy who, in my opinion, Paul Spadafora, is a better chess player than Danny Garcia. Right? Now, make no mistake, Garcia is by far the heavier puncher in this fight. Right? You saw the shape Amir Khan was in at the end of their fight. You saw Lucas Matisse hit the canvas when they fought. Right? You've seen big time guys get dropped by Danny Garcia. But you've got to find a guy to drop a guy. Right? Danny Garcia, as great as he is throwing bombs, isn't really a stalker, is he? He's not Mike Tyson. He's not Gennady Golovkin. He's not putting you on the clock and letting you know that you can run, but you can't hide. He's different. 
right? Go back and look at the Amir Khan tape. You're going to see Khan, ironically, was the more front foot heavy guy in that fight. So, I like the 14 to 1 underdog here. I know it's crazy, but somebody online has got to be picking these underdogs. I like the 14 to 1 underdog here. Rod Salker to win the fight. I'm going to hedge the play with Garcia by knockout. Understand what that means. If danger strikes, if Danny Garcia comes out and is front foot heavy and, you know, hunts down Rod Salka and destroys him, gets the KO, looks like Janady Golovkin, all right, I'll shake my head, I'll be in line, I'll be collecting. Because understand, you're getting such huge odds on Salka at 14-1 to that even with less than even money odds on Garcia by Kale, you can hedge the play. Right? But folks need to look even more carefully at Danny Garcia's record. Didn't Matisse go the distance? Didn't Zab Judah go the distance? You know, it's been years since Danny Garcia has taken out anybody in the first three rounds of a fight. You have to go back to 2011 for that. What happens if Salk is who I think he is and realizes that if he moves, comes in, flurries, gets back out, moves some more, if he fights really in an ambush style, there might not be much that Danny Garcia can do about it. Wasn't Matisse right in front of Garcia? Wasn't Zab Judah? Wasn't Amir Khan? What happens when a guy is circling Garcia and isn't right in front of him? Right? The problem with being a mid-range hooker is people know the range you need at which to be effective. If Salk is in jab range but not hook range, how's Garcia going to handle that if Salka is combining the distance with lateral movement. So, let's throw caution to the wind here. Understand, this is high risk. It's not for the casual gambler. Rather, it's for the gambler who realizes that it's the betting public who plays it safe who ends up financing all of these casinos. Right? So I like the 14-to-1 underdog here, Rod Salka, to win the fight, hedged with Garcia by KO. But understand the risk involved. If the champion, who has won some close decisions, right, the Kendall Holt split decision, the Mauricio Herrera decision in Puerto Rico, right, if the champ who, let's face it, too, right, a lot of judges will show up and know who the champ is. They'll be starstruck by the celebrity right no one's gonna cry for an unknown dreamer who loses a fight judges realize a lot of people will cry for a well-liked champ who loses his title or who loses a fight right just understand if Danny Garcia wins the decision you lose it all Okay, this is high risk, only bet money that you can afford to lose. Sometimes I believe the casinos get it wrong. Sometimes because a guy isn't that well known, no one actually sits down and looks at the film to figure out the guy's foot speed and what the guy's bringing. I encourage everyone here to look at the film of Rod Salka's last fight knowing that he's fighting an unbeaten fighter with a superstar trainer who had a punch. You're going to see that Salka makes his opponent at times look like he's wearing cement blocks for shoes. Then I want you to look at Danny Garcia fights. Garcia, you know, moves decently. But he doesn't move like Rod Salka. When a casino is going to give you 14 to 1 odds on a guy with the faster foot speed, who's mentally tough, who also has the faster hands, 
and who's really there to bank rounds. Salka, even though he got the early knockdown in his last fight, took his foot off the gas. He's really there to win rounds. He's focused. He knows what he wants to do. He's not going to be dragged into some machismo contest to prove he's the biggest, baddest man in the ring. He just wants the win. To me, this situation is ripe for an upset. I like the huge underdog hedged with the champ by KO. Let's face it, too. If you're a Danny Garcia fan and he fights the fight that you think is his best fight, then you would expect him to win by KO, wouldn't you? Let me hear from you. By the way, look at that Zab Judah fight again, too. You're going to see Judah's movement, which isn't Rod Salka's movement. Right? Judah moves a little, not a lot. You're going to see Judah's movement gave Danny Garcia some problems. Now, I'll agree, Salka's a righty, not a southpaw like Judah. But I'm here to tell you that Rod Salka, although his knockout ratio isn't great, has the legs to make this a competitive fight whether or not he deserves the shot. Right? Let me also say, too, if Rod Salka pulls the upset here, wow. Wow. Then we're talking about a whole different picture at 140 aren't we? Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me also say too, the Brandon Rios, Diego Chavez fight, right? Both guys are evenly matched. I believe that's made for a hedge, right? Don't be fooled by the Brandon Rios fight against Manny Pacquiao, where you know, Pacquiao is moving around the ring and doesn't stay in the pocket. That's not Diego Chavez. Diego Chavez is going to want to be right there. Folks, this is going to be a shootout. Manny Pacquiao was able to go 12 rounds with Brandon Rios because he was on the move. Mike Alvarado in the rematch was able to go the distance against Brandon Rios because that was a rematch. Right? He had seen Brandon Rios in the first fight in which he didn't go the distance. I'm expecting someone here to get stopped. It's a high-risk play. I like, well, put it this way. I like both guys by KO. I'm going to watch the odds at the last minute because you know a lot of money comes in right before a fight goes off, if possible then I'd like to change that to Chavez to win because you're getting better than even money on it. Right? Hedged with Rios by KO. Right? The goal here is just to collect if either guy gets the KO. When you have a fighter who you're getting better than even money odds on, if you can structure the bet where you even get that fighter to win by decision, then you want to incorporate that in your bet. Make no mistake, though, I'm expecting this fight to end by KO. Understand, too, Keith Thurman is more mobile than both of these guys. So the reason why that Diego Chavez-Keith Thurman fight made it to the 10th round is because Keith Thurman actually has mobility in his game. Right, Thurman won that fight by KO. Had Thurman stood right in front of Diego Chavez, like I expect Brandon Rios to, I would have expected that fight to not even make it to the 10th round. Now, why am I taking both guys by KO? Or, alternatively, if the odds allow, Chavez to win hedged with Rios by KO, instead of simply taking the under, simply because I want all 12 rounds, right? I don't want to play games with a fight where a guy is getting battered but is able to linger past the over-under, right? So I'm expecting a stoppage in Rios against Diego Chavez, right? Also, I'm expecting Lucas Brown, and Brown's a 10-1 favorite. 
You're not going to send a kid to university off of this fight. But I'm expecting Lucas Brown to win his fight. The guy he's fighting hasn't fought the caliber of opposition that Lucas Brown has fought. Understand, too, Lucas Brown is a guy who is big but who moves well for his size. Look into his history. You're going to see he used to be a kickboxer right so Lucas Brown to me is a better athlete he's a better fighter with better experience than the guy he's fighting let me hear from you leave your comments for me here online visit us at gamblersadvisory.com I hope you cash all your tickets thanks for stopping by